As a community assets group, we wanted to give a voice to Sally Ford to help understand how she fitted into the integrated care programme. The whole premise of the programme is that we build the new services and pilot new ideas around a patient-centred approach and around Sally Ford, who is your typical resident of Salford, um, and make sure we fit it in with all the things that are around and important to her to improve services. So as a community asset group, we've worked with older people with an aim of using their knowledge and life experience to make life better through listening and valuing their views making sure this influences services to be better in future, building on community strengths. This will keep people healthy, happy and independent. <laughs> what we thought, we'd uh, come out to the experts and ask them a couple of questions. Uh, so, uh, in the communities of Swinton and Eccles, uh, a series of uh, questionnaires were asked. Well, my name is Gilbert, uh, I'm from Eccles. I go to um, my girlfriend and um, uh, I do a lot of meetings. And these meetings you go to, Gilbert, what, what would they be about? All sorts of things. Yeah. I'm on the community committee, so I'm on the budget group. I'm, I'm on the training committee with Narbonne in France. But are you happy with the things you do, you're doing now? Oh, right. Yeah. I'm still alive. What motivates you to get up in the morning? This is really interesting. Attending events and activities, being with my family, drinking, enjoying, being alive, waking up, sunshine. I'm Pamela Morris. Some days I do some cleaning. Other days we might go out just for a walk around one of the precincts and see what's going on, have a cup of coffee. Albert and I. Um, and just normal shopping really. It's, it's all shops when you go out. There's not much else to do really, especially in this, this weather that we've been having. Yeah. Well, that's true, yeah. yeah. My name is Jeff Qureshi. Right. Yeah. I leave the house every day. Every day? Every day. Yeah. And then I go out where I live. Uh, there are a lot of older people live there. And I, I know them very well because I had a shop in that area for nearly 20 years. Right. So I know the old ladies. I go to see them and ask them if they need any shopping doing because the shop is not very far. It's only very near. So I go on and do shopping for them if they need it. Oh, that's brilliant. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I was uh, I keep myself very active and go around and help my community as well. No, I, I like some company all the time. Right. And don't want to sit at home. At the end of this learning experience, we want to achieve a reduction in emergency admissions and readmissions, a reduction in the number of permanent admissions to residential and nursing care, an increase in the take up of the flu vaccination, increase in satisfaction with the care and support provided to older people, an increase in the proportion of older people that feel supported to manage their own condition and an increase in the proportion of older people that die at home or their preferred place of dying. I look after my husband, he's got Alzheimer's with right. dementia. Right. So I, I have a lot of responsibility looking after Bill. Yeah. So by the time we get up in the morning and I've sorted the breakfast out and I've made his, put his tablets out for him, okay. usually we go out shopping things like that then of course by that time it's lunch time mm -hmm. if we're not going out for lunch then i'm making me soup and sandwiches at home right. what are your experiences with your carer well she's a good carer to start off with <laughs> and uh, she takes us to be shopping to and we usually go on morrison's do you do any other uh, outings with your carer apart from going to the shop no no, uh, the carer just, she just comes for that. Mm -hmm. What things could you do with your carer apart from just going to the shop once a week? Oh, I don't know, perhaps get round a bit more and see all the shops, you know. Like, mm. Mm. You see, I don't see anywhere where you could get clothes, you know, have a look round and see something, say a top horse. 
something just yeah. something a bit different. Something a bit different. I've been trying to get Albert interested in the buddy groups. Uh, if you've heard about those. No, I've not. What what are those? Uh, they're all to do with dementia. Okay. Right. And uh, I've been trying to get him to go to the buddy group. I take him. And then he phones me up to come and pick him up. <laughs> right. Uh, and he just can't seem to settle and uh, enjoy it like a lot of other people do. And sometimes it makes life very difficult because I don't have a social life really. And my, and my friends come to see me, but they all come to my house. Yes, I do have uh, I do have some friends. Thank goodness. Alice Hyatt. Hello, Alice. Um, I had a friend for 60 years, and it's a year yesterday since she died, and she had lots of people going in and out. I used to go and sit with her from four till nine each day. This was in hospital? No, she was at home. At home. And then she, uh, you know, because she got district nurses and carers and all coming to see her, and that which I thought was great really because she wanted to stay in her own home. I miss her because, as I say, we used to go four, four till nine every day, but she had so many people coming in and out and I thought that was great. She got an hospital, hospital bed at home and um, the doctors came to see her, the chiropodist, everyone came to her. I was in uh, church one Sunday morning and suddenly I got great pressure on my head and I sat down and my head fell forward and that's the last dip I knew until somebody walked me to the back of the church and they called an ambulance and I was taken to Salford Royal accident and emergency <clears throat> let me see, they put me on a bed and I waited for say 10 to 15 minutes and the doctor came in, it wasn't long and uh, he said, tell your doctor to change your pills. And that's what had caused it, the wrong pills. Have you had your flu vaccine? Do you ha and where do you get it? In medical centre. Okay, and is that easy? Is it an easy place to get to? <laughs> well, it's not far for people that can walk, but I can't walk very far. Right, okay. So it isn't too far away. Okay. And uh, we're having a bit of a discussion about the uh, vaccine. Uh, Albert? Yeah. Uh, how do you get your flu vaccine every year? Yes, you do. And uh, is it easy to get? Is it an easy place to get to to have it? Yeah, just up the road. Okay. And uh, was is there anything that is it possible? Do you think it could be possible to maybe have the flu vaccine maybe sent to you so you can have it at home rather than having to go out and get it? Oh, go out for it. Then I can go and have a drink, can I? <laughs> <laughs> my, my wife, uh, she she had it. Uh, had a mild heart attack at home and we took her to the Salford Royal Hospital and uh, the, the paramedic also checked my wife at home and they said she's, she's got in a very acute condition so we have taken to the hospital. So from the hospital they, 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 they were suggesting that she would, should go into a care home? Care house. Well they gave me the list of the care, out, care homes right and go and see them. So I went to three care homes and I see the condition, it was very, very bad because the people, the, uh, the care, carer, they don't, take, don't bother about the people in, 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 uh, in their care and some of them were complaining about it and nobody was attending to it. I d decided that my wife should not go there, mm -hmm. she should rather die at home. Right. So I suggested back to the hospital that I've seen the condition of the care homes and they're not satisfactory, so I want my, my wife to be transferred to my house and not, if you don't want to let my, uh, my wife stay in the hospital, I would rather take her my home. So they decided and they took her my home and she was there for about two days and she died. Right. And uh, that put me in a very, very sad condition. Okay, so we've spoken quite a lot about um, the things that you value in everyday life, what you do to motivate to get yourself out of bed in the morning, that kind of thing. We want to think then about how we can use all that knowledge to improve the services that are delivered. 
So maybe it's worth thinking about what's the, what are the positive aspects of services you've received from like the GP, from the hospital or in the community? What have been good experiences of using services? Well, <coughs> we, all my things are in the medical centre and it's difficult to get two of them on the same because they have to go by taxi. Okay. And uh, you can't say I wanted to go to the chiropodist and then to the district nurse. Yeah. And, and then the GP, <laughs> the one for profession. The, you can't, um, it's about five, six days they take up that way. When you actually get to the services, do you find the quality of the appointments is good? Yes, yeah, it's the hospitals really. When you go for anything else, you wait a long while. And then you go in in like 10 minutes and you go out and you have to wait for the ambulance then. Yeah. You're there all day just for a 10 minute talk to the doctor, <laughs> <laughs> if you know what I mean. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so Jeff, you said that the doctors are very good. Could you tell us a bit more about what it is about them you think they do really well? Well, they, they give you, um, when you need any appointment, they give you straight away. And also, they're very punctual at the time. Is this your GP? Your yeah, yes, yeah, I'm talking about GPs, yes. And uh, I, I had a good experience about them. They're very good and they treat you well. Mm -hmm. They welcome you. and they, uh, also help you in every way they could. Are you okay. Yeah. So do you find, do you have to go to the GP often? No. No. No, no, no I don't like doctors. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's small, small ailment, I do it myself. Right, so you look after yourself at yeah. home, yeah. <laughs> Over the past four months, the Community Asset Mapping Group has brought together mature persons and service providers to work together. Our collective approach is based on using knowledge and life experiences of mature persons to make life better by listening to and valuing their views. Making sure this influences services to be better in future by building on community strengths. This will keep mature persons healthy, happy and independent.